so today let us look at an excel sheet that is prepared for the design of our beam column shear connection in our last lecture we did some manual calculation for the design of our shear connection and the same calculations today we will look at in an excel sheet so as we discussed in our previous lecture uh, based on how we want to assemble our components to form a connection our calculations will differ so based on your calculations you have to prepare your excel sheet and this excel sheet which you can see on your screen has been prepared based on the calculations that we did for our shear connection in our previous lecture you can refer to that video in our youtube channel as well so before beginning uh, let us see some of the features or limitations of this excel sheet the first two features is that we have selected an I section for four beam and column. Sometimes you may want to use channel section or you may also use hollow section. In that case, these calculations will differ and this Excel sheet will not work. And similarly, the third feature is that the cleat is bolted to the beam and welded to the column. So if you remember, this was our column and this was our beam we used a cleat plate having two legs to connect our beam and column and we used bolts to connect this cleat to our beam whereas we used welding to connect the other leg of our cleat angle to this column so if you wish that instead of bolt here you want to weld this portion and use bolt here instead then also our calculations will differ and this excel sheet will not work and finally the fourth feature is that the bolts are arranged in a single line along the depth of the beam that means if you look at this portion here these bolts are arranged in a single line however number of bolts whatever number of bolts we may require these are all in a single line these are not present in two row or three row like this this is not there the bolts are in a single line along the depth of the beam so these things you have to take care when using this excel sheet now let's go into our excel sheet here if you see the cells which are under this orange color it means that you have to insert the values for the cells in this color whereas if you see the cells in excel which are in this green color then it means that these are some formula have been used in this cell and based on the value that you have given in this other orange colored cell these values will be calculated directly by the excel let's begin with our calculations here so first some of the things that we need to give is uh, first we have to give the value of shear force that we are designing for so the value of the shear force that we designed for was 150 kilonewton. So let me change this 300 kilonewton to 150 kilonewton. Then we have to give the details of the beam and column. So if you remember, we used a beam which has a flange width of, I think it was 150 mm, and the thickness of flange of beam, this is 10 mm. These two values are okay. And when it comes to wave of the beam, the depth that we considered was 350 mm. So let me change this 400 to 350. And the thickness of the wave of beam was 6 mm. So this is okay. And then column details. The flange dimensions were 150 mm by 10 mm. Same as that for the beam. And the wave dimensions were 450 by 8 mm, which is okay. Here. So after giving this input, then we have to give the material details for beam and column we have assumed that the ultimate stress of our material for beam and column is 490 megapascals and the yield stress is 350 megapascals that is newton per square millimeter so after this we have given the details for our cleat here we used a cleat of thickness 5 mm so let me change this to 5 mm and the cleat material yield stress and ultimate stress were the same as that for our beam and column 350 and 490 respectively so cleat details have also been given here and finally bolt details we use bolts of diameter 16 mm so let me 
click on this drop down menu here and change the value to 16 mm we use the grid of bolt 8.8 so 8.8 means the ultimate stress is 800 and the yield stress of bolt is 640 newton per millimeter squared so these have been auto calculated now to calculate the shear capacity of bolt the shear type is we have to choose either this is single shear or double shear so let me draw a diagram here to illustrate it so let us say that this is our side view of our beam that we are using i haven't drawn column here and this is cleat plate on one side and this is cleat plate on other side so this cleat plate has been welded to the column in this way and there are bolts so we talked about the bearing surfaces last time when we were doing manual calculations we talked about bearing surfaces and discussed that in these sections here this section and this section for the bolt that is connected to this beam member here these upper sections are in bearing whereas for the bolt connected to let us say connected to the cleat plate these lower surfaces are in bearing so this is about bearing what about the shearing so we can see that is yes, our shear force of 150 kilo newton is acting downwards these bolts are under the action of shearing also so how many shearing planes will be there one plane will be this and another plane will be this here so each bolt is under the action of two shearing planes here one shearing plane and another shearing plane so we choose the shear type is double shear here so shear type we have selected is double shear and for conservative design we will choose the location of shear plane such that both shear planes are in thread so after giving these inputs the excel sheet calculates the shear capacity of a single bolt which is given as 115.9 kN. so you can look at the formula for the shear capacity of single bolt in the formula bar here so this is the shear capacity of one bolt now we have to find bearing capacity and to find bearing capacity we need to again input some data here for example these are the given data here so the diameter of hole since we have used a diameter of 16 mm the diameter of bolt hole will be 16 plus 2 that is 18 mm this we have to input ourselves we used a pitch distance of 50 mm we calculated it last time you can refer to our video lecture the previous video lecture the end distance for bolts we used 30 mm and the edge distance for bolts also we used 30 mm so let me change this 21 to 30 and this thickness of plate what is the thickness of plate here the thickness of the plate will be 6 mm because the thickness of the wave of our beam is 6 mm so let me use this as 6 mm now to calculate the bearing capacity first the we have to determine what will be the thickness for bearing capacity calculation here you can see that 6 mm thickness has been written so how do you get this 6 mm thickness so this thickness of plate for bearing calculation since in our last lecture I did not go into the details of bolt capacity calculation and I suggested you to refer to our lecture on bolt capacity calculation so I am going into a bit detail in here so the thickness of plate for bearing calculation is for our code will be the minimum of these two thicknesses one is when bolt is bearing on beam wave and when bolt is bearing on cleat leg 
when bolt is bearing on click leg so what will be the thickness when the bolt is bearing on beam wave this will be equal to thickness of our beam wave which is 6 mm and what will be the thickness when bolt is bearing on cleat leg this will be the since the bolt is bearing on cleat leg at two places one place here and so one place here and another place here this will be the summation of thicknesses of these two cleat legs which will be 5 mm plus 5 mm now the minimum of these two values one is 6 and another is 10 the minimum is 6 mm so we use this 6 mm for the calculation of bearing capacity so in this way we have got here 6 mm now this kv how do we get this kv this kv again as per our codal provision will be the minimum of four values one is e over 3d naught another is p over 3d naught minus one sorry not minus one i think it is minus 0.05 third value is f u v over f u and fourth value is 1 so e is the edge distance which we have given as 30 mm d naught is the diameter of hole p is the pitch distance f u v this f u v we take as the ultimate stress of bolt material so in this way we have got four values here and k v will be taken as the minimum of these four values which will get as 0.55 And then finally bearing capacity of bolt is calculated here 51.74 kN. How is this calculated? As per our code, the bearing capacity of bolt is given as 2.5 kV, which is calculated here. D, which is the diameter of bolt, T is the thickness and FU. So this FU is the minimum of bolt or plate stress. So in this way our bearing capacity is calculated which comes out to be 51.74 so if you remember this was the bolt capacity that we used when we were doing manual calculations also now based on these two values which will be the critical action for shearing we get a capacity of 115.9 kN and for bearing we get 51.74 so the bearing will be our critical action on bolt so our bolt capacity will be taken as 51.74 then now to calculate the number of bolt the number of bolt this is calculated as the total shear force that we have to transfer 150 kN divided by bolt capacity which is 51.74 kN so this comes out to be 2.89 so we round up and take the number of bolt as 3 so remember in our previous lecture also when we were calculating the number of bolts we used the total value of shear force that is 150 kN but when we were checking for the plates and other things the welding what we did in our later steps is that we only took the value half that is 75 kN so you have to understand this since there are these bolts these three number of bolts will be responsible for transferring this whole shear force of 150 kN to the cleat leg that is connected to our beam that is this leg 1 we take the whole shear force value of 150 kN but after this we can see that we have two cleat plates so each cleat plate we assume will resist half of the shear force that is only 75 kN and hence we use 75 kN in our, up, in our next steps so remember this So now after calculating the number of bolts we will check for cleat and we assume the length of the cleat to be 160 kN. How do we get to this? Okay. how do we get to this 160 mm what we did is that if we assume that this is our 
three play. We have three bolts here. So this edge distance we consider 30 mm. This edge distance we consider 30 mm and these two piece distances we have taken as 50 mm and 50 mm if you sum up these four values you will get 160 kN. newton so this is the length of clip required and 160 mm is the length of the clip adopted also and we adopted a width of clip as 75 mm and then we checked for the clip value so here yeah, the result have come out to be okay so how do we check for this okay value what we have used here Okay, let me see this. Yes, yeah, it's the same way that we are using. If 160 mm, the length of clit adopted is at least equal to the length of clit required, this will come out to be okay. And after the determination of the size of our clit, now we will determine the strength of our clit and check whether it is sufficient or not. So we checked for two factors. One was the yielding of gross section and another is the rupture of net section. So the formula that we used with for yielding TDZ is given by AZ gross area into FY by gamma M0 and for rupture TDN is given by 0.9 net area AN into FU by gamma M1. So our Tensile resistance of cleat based on yielding came out to be 111 kN and rupture came out to be 91 kN. So the tensile resistance of our cleat will be the minimum of these two values which is 91.73 and since this tensile resistance is greater than the value of load to be resisted that is 75 kN. This is ok. After checking for cleat now then we move on to checking for the welding and checking for the CR8 interface. So what we have done here is first we check for cleat leg connected to column. We check for welding head interface between legs. That means if this is our cleat angle and we have used this bot weld to calculate or to connect these two cleat angles, two cleat plates, is this welding sufficient or not? So how did we do this? We first assumed the size of weld is 4 mm. The throat thickness is calculated as 0.7 times the size of weld. So the weld length available is equal to the length of our clip. And based on these values, we determine the permissible shear stress, which comes out to be 226.32. And weld stress at the interface came out to be 167.42. So since our weld stress is greater, sorry, is lesser than the permissible stress, this check also gives OK. And then we check for the shear rate interface between legs. What formula did we use? To check for shear, we use the formula AV into FY divided by root 3 into gamma M0. This came out to be 275 point, sorry. This comes out to be this 146.96 kN. Now since this value is again greater than 75 kN, it's ok. And finally, we checked for the welding of our cleat angle to our column. And to check for that, we assume the size of weld is 4 mm. I think we have assumed the size of weld is 4.5 mm. So let me change this to. So that the throat thickness comes out to be 3.15 mm. And weld length available is 160 mm. The permissible weld stress is the same value to 26.32. So how do you calculate this permissible shear stress? It is given as the ultimate stress divided by uh, root 3 into gamma m0 or gamma mw for welding. So this comes out to be 226. The weld stress at the interface comes out to be 148. So the weld stress is lesser than the permissible weld stress. That means our calculation is okay. So in this way we have prepared an excel sheet and did the same calculation that we did in our manual calculations. So in our next lecture we will be continuing with this design series and we will look at the design of a moment connection. Till then stay safe and keep watching our youtube channel. Thank you.